There are two very different ways to make alkynes that you should know. One of them is a reaction that's very much like the one you learned to make alkenes, the elimination of HBr. Only in this case, because you want to make a triple bond, you need to eliminate two moles of HBr. The second one is different. It takes advantage of the fact that you can remove an acetylenic hydrogen from a terminal alkyne. And when you do that, it makes a nucleophile. That nucleophile can react with alkyl halides. So in a two-step process, you replace hydrogen with an alkyl group. Let's take a better look at each of these separately. Like you learn for making alkenes, to remove HBr to make an alkyne, you use a strong base. The initial step is loss of one mole of HBr to make a vinyl bromide. But that vinyl bromide, in the presence of a really strong brace, also loses HBr, so we make the triple bond. I've indicated that we use an excess of the strong base sodium amide here because we need at least two moles of the base. Typically, we'll use even more. The intermediate that's formed is rapidly dehydrohalogenated to make the triple bond. Of course, this only works if we have a good way to make the 1,2 dibromides, compounds that we call vicinal dibromides. And in fact, we do. Electrophilic addition of bromine to an alkene makes the dibromides. So, to use a specific example, we could treat the alkene I've shown on the left with bromine to make the dibromide, and then subsequently treat it with excess sodium amide to make the alkyne. It's a two-step process that you can think of as turning a double bond into a triple bond. The alkylation approach is quite different. The proton of a terminal alkyne is especially acidic for hydrocarbons. And so when a terminal alkyne is treated with strong base, that hydrogen is removed. The base that I just talked about for eliminating HBr to make alkynes works well. In any case, once that hydrogen is removed, we make an anion and that has a pair of electrons on that carbon and a negative charge. This intermediate is a good nucleophile, so it reacts in SN2 reactions with alkyl halides. The alkyl group of the halide is transferred to the carbon atom of the alkyne. So, again, to show a specific example, we could treat the alkyne I've got here on the left with sodium amide to make the acetylide, and subsequent reaction with ethyl iodide makes an alkyne. We have a methyl group attached to one carbon and an ethyl group that we just attached on the other carbon. So you can see that this would give us a way of making larger molecules from smaller ones by making a carbon-carbon bond. It turns out making carbon-carbon bonds is a really important part of organic synthesis. Let's take a look at a couple of additional examples of synthesis of alkynes. Suppose we want to make this alkyne a di-substituted acetylene. We could consider doing it by transforming an alkene into the alkyne. In terms of our retrosynthetic planning analysis, that means that the precursor that we need to think of first is the vicinal dibromide. And when we think of what that could come from, of course it can come directly from an alkene. So in two steps, we'll convert the alkene into the alkyne we want. What's left to do is write the synthesis from start to finish, filling in the reagents. Treating the alkene with bromine makes a dibromide and treating that dibromide with excess sodium amide makes the alkyne we need. So here we have the entire synthetic planning. First, the retrosynthetic analysis, and then the start to finish planning of the synthesis. But that's not the only way we could make this compound. We could make it from a terminal acetylene by alkylation. We know that we can attach primary alkyl groups to an acetylenic carbon. There's a CH2 right here. On the other side, the carbon attached to the acetylene carbon is a secondary carbon. It only has one hydrogen attached to it, and it's a very poor prospect for an SN2 reaction. So as we think about making this compound, we'll rule out attaching an isopropyl group to a terminal alkyne. So as we think of molecules that this could come from, the ethyl group would be one of the reacting partners. We'll get that from ethyl iodide. And the other partner is an acetylene that has a hydrogen where we want to attach the alkyl group. Writing the synthesis from start to finish, the first step is removal of the proton using a strong base, sodium amide. And then we'll treat that acetylite anion with ethyl iodide to make the alkyne. There are two distinctly different ways to make this target. Both could work. Which would we choose? Well, it depends on which starting materials we have easy access to. Let's look at one more example. Here's a little bit more complicated target. In terms of our retrosynthetic analysis, 
we can see three distinct pieces that this molecule could come from. The portion I've shown in white could come from acetylene, and we would need to add two alkyl groups to the ends of that acetylene. One of them is the portion I've shown in blue, that could come from an alkyl halide, and the other alkyl group is shown on the right in tan, that would come from a different alkyl halide. So the planning is straightforward. We'll start with an acetylene and replace each hydrogen on acetylene with an alkyl group. Take a look. Acetylene is treated with sodium amide, and once the acetylide is made, we treat with an alkyl bromide. That makes an intermediate where we've replaced one of the acetylenic hydrogens. We still have to replace the other one. We'll do that, of course, by treating with sodium amide and the other alkyl halide in two sequential alkylation steps. We add two alkyl groups to the starting molecule acetylene and have a rather complicated structure quite quickly. We've made two carbon-carbon bonds and we've made a complicated molecule from three much simpler ones. So you might be wondering, do you need to put the blue alkyl group on first and the tan one on second? Or could they be done in the other order? The opposite order for alkylation is just fine. First, we'll treat with sodium amide and then the tan alkyl bromide, a compound called benzyl bromide. In the second step, it was used sodium amide again, and the other alkyl bromide. We made exactly the same target. The order of alkylation is immaterial. So, the take-home message is, when you have two primary alkyl groups attached to an acetylene, that acetylene can be made by adding either one of the alkyl groups, or both of them, and in either order.